Father, your word is light and life, is a lamp to our feet. We ask this morning, O oh Lord, that you will add a blessing to the hearing and the preaching of your word. Speak to us, O oh Lord, for we, your servant, servants, are listening. Prepare our hearts, O oh Lord, and make it the fertile ground for your word to grow and give fruit. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. There is a story of a fisherman who was involved in a tragic shipwreck. I'm going to give him a name and I'm going to call him Santiago. Santiago, James in English. Santiago owned a small boat and had a, a few guys working with him as fishermen. And one day Santiago and his crew were, you know, fishing out in the Caribbean Sea. They were used to fish in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea, but this day, as they were fishing in high seas, a storm rose up and the whole crew was tossed overboard in choppy seas. Santiago found himself next to, next to a life raft and scrambled aboard. His four shipmates, who fell into the sea at the same time, drowned as they struggled to join him. Santiago remained on the open sea without food and without hope. And after drifting with sea currents for 10 days, Santiago arrived with his raft at a small, uninhabited island. And as he arrived there, he prayed fervently to God, asking him to send someone to rescue him. Every day, Santiago revised the horizon for help, and as time went by, the help Santiago was longing for seemed farther and farther away. Days became weeks, which in turn became months, and tired and hopeless, Santiago built a small little cabin to protect himself from the elements of nature and also to protect the few possessions he had. But then one day after going on a walk looking for food, he returned and found the little hut in flames. The fire was burning out of control and the smoke rose into the sky. Santiago was confused, Santiago was angry, and he was crying. And while crying, he said to God, how can you allow this to happen? So lamenting his grim situation, Santiago fell asleep on the sand. Early next morning, Santiago was awakened by the sound of a ship that was approaching the island. He could not believe his eyes. Someone had finally come to rescue him. And as he got in the boat, Santiago asked his rescuers, how do you know I was here? And to his surprise, the sailors said to him, we saw the smoke signals you made last night. You know, dear church, all of us are very familiar with the popular saying that goes like this, everything happens for a reason. But I'm not here to tell you that everything happens for a reason, because number one, I don't like the saying. For me, these words are only a description of the law of cause and effect. Of course, everything happens for a reason, right? I remember when my wife got pregnant with our first child, she came to tell me the news and with great, great excitement I said, how did it happen? <laughs> she looked at me and said, really honey? <laughs> how did it happen? I thought you were smarter than that. You don't know how it happened? <laughs> well, my point with this story is that everything happens for a reason. So I'm not here to tell you that everything happens for a reason, number one, because 
is a description of the law of cause and effect. But on top of that, I'm not here to tell you that everything happens for a reason because everything happens for a reason doesn't mean that there is always a hidden good behind the things that happen to us. Are you with me? You know, everything happens for a reason is not a hopeful statement to offer to those suffering the consequences of senseless acts of violence as a way to imply that there must be something good about the horrific event. Actually, in some cases, this saying could prevent us from looking at evil in the eye. Do you know what I'm saying? For me, everything happens for a reason is not a source of encouragement. As I said, everything happens for a reason is not a, is only a description of the law of cause and effect, and it doesn't mean that there is always a hidden good behind the things that happens to us. So I'm not here to tell you that everything happens for a reason. And please don't say it to anybody. Please. I am here to tell you that we serve a great, powerful God that in any and every situation works for the good of those who love Him. That's something totally different. We serve the one true God who in perfect power redeems and turns our wailing into dancing. We serve the God who loves to change our situation and turns things around and turn our chain, our shortage into abundance, our darkness into light, our weakness into strength, and the negative into a positive, even when there is nothing positive about our realities. I don't know if you know this, but I found it to be good news. We serve a God of opportunities, dear friends, who does not let suffering go to waste. Are you with me there? The scripture lesson for, the, for today comes from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the church in Rome. And in the section of the letter we read this morning, Paul is telling us to consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. But with all honesty, dear friends, we know it's difficult to understand these words when hardships knock on our doors. I believe it can be difficult to live with the confidence that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him when a mortal disease threatens your physical well-being or the health of someone you love. It can be really hard to embrace this promise when you have to face the death of a child or deal with an addiction. Actually, it can be a challenge to believe that in everything God works for the good of those who love Him when life seems to be nothing else but pain and suffering. Let's be real. Do you agree with me on that? So the question for us this morning is, how can we cling to the promise that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him instead of drowning in the immensity of our problems? How can we trust God with our minds and also with our hearts without fixing our eyes on the difficulties? How can we follow the admonition of Solomon who wrote, Trust in the Lord with all your heart? The reason I am intentionally making the difference between the mind and the heart is because many of us don't have an intellectual problem. We know the Bible affirms that God works for the good of those who love Him. However, there are times we suffer from spiritual amnesia because we have not hidden, we have not treasured God's Word in our hearts. So how can we treasure the Word of God in our hearts? Well, let me give you a twofold answer. Number one, you can treasure the Word of God in your heart by remembering the biblical story. And not only remembering the biblical story, but also knowing that we are part of that same story. You know, sometimes we read the Bible and we think, cool stories of the past 
but it's not cool stories of the past. It is cool stories of the present too. We are part of the biblical stories. The Bible is full of illustrations where God proves that he works for the good of those who love him. You may remember Daniel who was taken captive to a foreign land. The new king imposed on him a new language, changed Daniel's name, and tried to change his diet and tradition. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den for practicing his faith. But after going through all these trials, the Bible says that God made Daniel to prosper. And all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth heard of the power and, God and wonders of the God of Daniel. You may remember the story of Joseph who was subject to the hatred of his own brothers who sold him as a slave. He was falsely accused and unjustly condemned to prison. The cupbearer of the king whom Joseph helped forgot him. But God was always with Joseph. And after experiencing treason and injustice, God made Joseph to prosper. And Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And because of it, the Hebrew people were saved from the famine. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Job lost all his possessions along with his children and his health. Let's talk about crisis. And we can say that Job lost everything important to him, yet remained faithful to God. And after a prolonged season of suffering, God restored Job and blessed him with twice as much as he had before his trial began. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. You may remember Moses who was born under unfavorable circumstances. He lived as a fugitive for 40 years for having killed an Egyptian, spent 80 years, two-thirds of his life in the wilderness, and was subject to the many vicissitudes of human existence. And after having a rough life, Moses, Moses said goodbye to the Hebrew people with these words, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you because nothing can separate us from the love of God. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Jesus was born under abnormal conditions because there was no room available for him and his parents. Several times, Jesus, God incarnate, was on the verge of being stoned by his opponents. The master didn't have a place where he could lay his head. It is true that many loved him, but Jesus also had many adversaries who found a way to execute him. But God, through the not-so-easy life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, made salvation possible to us. Because in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. And let me tell you this, dear friends. If God did it with Job, Daniel, Joseph, Moses, and many others, the Lord can do the same in your life. In fact, right at this moment, God continues to work for the good of his people, those who love him. And that includes you and me. And if you are grateful for that, please say amen. 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 So how can you treasure the word of God in your heart? Number one, remember the biblical story and keep always this in your heart. You are par of that same story and here's number two remember your own story don't look forward in fear dear friends you know when things get heated when life hits things up for us we may become afraid but I'm here to tell you today do not look forward in fear look backward in appreciation and remember the unexpected tax reform, uh, refund, the timely counsel, the timely prognosis, the surprising call, the generosity of that complete stranger that saved your life. The time you knocked out cancer, the time you have been free from that uncomfortable disease. 
When I get in difficult situations, I remember I usually bring myself back to the time when I was in Mexico, running away from people who were haunting me, showing up in a church that I didn't know anybody, talking to a preacher, and the preacher telling me right in the spot, you are coming with me home today. Let me tell you, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. That's a miracle, dear friends. And that fills me with courage to move forward and say, if God got my back in the past, God has my back in my present and my future. So remember your own story. Remember, be thankful, and know that your present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Remember that God is redeeming. Remember that God is making all things genuinely working for the good of those who love Him. I know that at times life can be very painful. But we can always live with the certainty that God works for the good of those who love Him. So dear friends, here is what I'm asking you today. Next time you find yourself in the corner of trials and emotional distress, do this things. Number one, remind yourself of the words of David and make them your own. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I don't know how long the night will last, but I can tell you this for sure, it won't last forever. I don't know how long the suffering will last. I don't know how long the sickness will last. But I can assure you, it will not last forever. Joy comes in the morning. Next time you find yourself in the corner of distress and trials, imitate the faith of Job, who in a critical moment said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Praise God in all circumstances. That's a biblical principle. And you cannot do that, let me tell you, if you are not anchored in the truth and in the promise that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him. And here is my last piece of advice. Next time you find yourself in the corner of trials and emotional distress, do this. Live with the confidence that there will come a time in your life when you are going to be able to say the words of Joseph. God made me forget all my hardships. God has prospered me in the land of my sorrow. You, brothers and sisters in Christ, it is easy to get angry when things don't go our way, when things go wrong. But we should not lose heart because God is working in our lives at all times. Even in the midst of hardship and suffering, God is working for the good of those who love Him. All things may not be good, but God can and will redeem all things for good. So the next time you see your heart burning, Remember that it may simply be a smoke signal that comes from the grace of God. For all the negative things that happens to us, we need to remind ourselves that God works for the good of those who love Him. So don't say it anymore. Don't say everything happens for a reason. As people of faith, we say, in all things, come and join me, God works for the good of those who love him. Father, we give you thanks for reminding us that you are our work in our lives, making all things new, working for the good of your people, working for the good of the whole creation. And with creation, we wait patiently and eagerly for you to make all things good again. As we wait patiently, help us, O oh Lord, to unite forces with you and to work with you for the healing and the mending 
of creation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, let's go out into the world. Remember, stand firm in the promises of God. Rest in Christ your Savior. And as you do so, may you know the richness and fullness of God's grace. May you experience every dimension of the love of Christ. May the Spirit dwell within you through faith. To the Holy One whose power works within us to accomplish more than we can ask or imagine or comprehend. Be glory forever and ever. And may the peace of God be with you until we meet again. Amen.